Hello and welcome to another video. This time we're going to take a look at a slightly different way that we can present our pictures. We're going to create a curled photo effect. Right, let's make a start. Heading over to the Layers panel, we're going to duplicate the background layer. To do that, simply use Command J or Control J. That's Command J or Control J. Next, we're going to click on the background layer, making this the live layer. Heading over to that little padlock. Now clicking on this is going to unlock it. It is now called layer zero. That padlock has disappeared. The reason for doing this is I want to make the background larger. So bringing my cursor out, I've got the move tool. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit to give myself a bit more space. So I'm going to press and hold down alt or option. Now I'm going to press space bar. Now I've got the zooming out tool to this area here. It will do nicely. To make it larger, I'm going to come to image, transform, we're going to go to free transform. Coming down to the bottom grab handle, press, hold down alt or option. Hold it down alt or option. Look at this. All four sides are coming out. Going to take it to this sort of region. Here it will do. Coming to the center grab handle, hold down alt or option again. Lift it up. Now just top and bottom are coming out. Going to take it to this area. That's the sort of border I want around this image. Now, why didn't I use the canvas size to enlarge it? Well, with canvas size, it's a little bit of guesswork, isn't it? It depends on the file size. Using the transform tool, you can see exactly how much of a border you're creating. Okay, next, bring my cursor, which is inside the frame, double click to apply it. Now, so we can see it, we're gonna head up to image. We're gonna come down to resize, and we're gonna go to reveal all. We want to fill this with color. So I'm going to press D on the keyboard. We now have the default colors of black as a foreground, white as a background. I'm going to fill this with white. So to fill it with white, there's a very nifty shortcut. Now the first thing you need to do is press and hold down command or control. So hold down command or control. On a PC, press backspace. And on a Mac, press delete. And there it is. We have now filled layer zero with white. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up to our create new layer icon. In that goes layer two. Bring your cursor over the thumbnail of layer one. Press and hold down command or control. You can see that little square on the back. Click down. We have a selection. This is our live layer. Now we're going to fill this with the foreground color, which is black. So hold down alt or option, PC, backspace, Mac, delete and there it is we have filled this with black now this is going to be our shadow layer so let's rename it bring your cursor over the word uh, layer 2 and we're going to type in shadow right press enter or return to apply it next thing we're going to do with the selection still in place head up to layer 1 and we're going to apply a stroke border so heading up to image stroke outline selection color black not so sure that's going to work with this so click in the window we're going to change this to white so top corner here because I've got a slightly older looking image just going to take it up into the yellows a little bit bringing my cursor out into that region there so there it is we're now not using a pure white we've now got that little bit of an off white which I think will look better for this image with your images you could probably use white or whatever you think is going to suit it next 38 pixels, that should be pretty good. I want quite a large stroke border because don't forget, this is going to be the frame of our photo. Location, inside, that is important. Click on OK once you have done that and there it is. There's that stroke line going right the way around. Next, I'm going to use Command D or Control D. That's Command D, Control D to remove that selection. Next, for the background, I'm going to click on layer zero. This is now our live layer. Now I was going to add a texture, but I've had a little bit of a change in plan. What I thought we'd do is have a look at styles. Now with styles, if you come up to the top, click on this, you've now got a drop down menu. I'm going to go to patterns. And with patterns, my favorite is this one here, which is oak. Clicking on oak there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's click back on layers. Now we need to go back up to layer one because next we're going to apply that curled photo effect. Now the first thing we need to do is go to image, rotate, and we need to rotate it 90 degrees to the right. Now this only works when the image is in the vertical. Filter, distort, 
shear. This is where we're going to curl our photo and uh, pretend you haven't seen this bit here. I'm just going to lift it up. Now, when you open it up, you will get a very small little uh, panel like this. You will have grab handles to the top, the bottom, wrap around a very small preview. Bring your cursor to the center. If you click down, in goes another grab handle. If you lift it up or take it to the right, should I say, you can see we're curling it now from the two sides up to the center. Take it to the left. We're now curling it from the center up to the two sides. Now you only need to make a very small adjustment. Don't be tempted to take it down too far. So I'm gonna keep it on the line and I'm gonna bring it to this region. There, that looks pretty good. Click OK and notice just how much it curls it, that very small amount. Yes, I think that works well. Next, image, rotate 90 degrees to the left. Now that we've done that, I'm going to zoom in. So I'm going to press Command or Control. I'm now going to press the space bar. I have the Move tool. I just want to move the picture up a little bit. So I'm going to use the arrows on the keyboard. Well, it would help if I click down. I'm now going to use the arrow on the keyboard to move it up into this region. Here, that should be good like that, just dropping it down very slightly. I think we need to soften the edges of our shadow. So clicking on our shadow layer, we're now gonna to come to Filter, Blur. We're gonna to come to Gaussian Blur. And with Gaussian, let's just drop this back a bit and bring my cursor out to the edge. If I click down, there, that's the start, release it. That's blurring it by a radius of 31.8. Let's take it up just a touch higher to this sort of region here, 33. Let's go for 36. There, that looks pretty good. Click OK to that. Now, I want to just change the position very slightly. So I'm going to use Command T or Control T, which is the Transform tool. I'm not going to touch the top because I like the way the shadows. In fact, I am going to take it up very slightly. I just want the shadow to come there to the top edge. That's on the top edge. Not keen on this, but we'll deal with that in just a moment. Coming to the bottom, clicking on the bottom grab handle, pulling it out. So we've now started in the shadow around about this region here and here, taking it out into this area, perhaps just a little bit more on the side like this and a little bit more on this side like that. Cursor inside the frame, double click, that's now applied it. Coming up to opacity, just dropping down the opacity into this region here. There, that looks pretty good. If I just switch this off and on, look at the way it just gives that curled photo effect. Yeah, it really does finish it off nicely. Talking about finishing it off nicely, that top bit, not keen on it. So we're gonna put in a layer mask. You may have noticed the way the color swapped over. Picking up my paintbrush, bringing it out, I'm gonna right click. What have I got? I've got a 300 pixel soft edge brush. If I just press enter or return, of course, this is down under tool options. There it is there and you can see all the other bits and pieces. I've got 100% opacity. Bringing my cursor out, or should I say my brush, I'm gonna click down. Now, before you release your pen or mouse, hold down shift on the keyboard, release your pen or mouse, come over to the other side, click down and it goes straight across. Looking around the picture, like the way this is uh, looking. Something else I'd like to do is perhaps give a little bit of a highlight down the center. So I'm gonna click back on layer one, bring your cursor over the thumbnail, press and hold down command or control. You've got that square on the back, clicking down. We now have a selection. Putting in a new empty layer, layer two. Over to the toolbox, I'm gonna to press X on the keyboard, so I've now got white as on my foreground color. Don't forget, I've got that 300 pixel soft edge brush. I'm gonna click down. I need to bring the brush so it's midpoint over those dotted, those marching ants, clicking down there, holding down the shift key on the keyboard. So shift on the keyboard, bringing it down, clicking down because you held down shift, it shot straight through. Using Command D or Control D, we can remove that selection. Now that's looking, not particularly realistic as a highlight. Blend mode, we're gonna change from normal. We're gonna to go to soft lights, starting to get there. Opacity, dropping the opacity down to this region. There, that looks pretty good. If we just switch this off and on, you can see what that's doing to the image. Incidentally, if you want to reposition it, resize it, 
Yes, that very useful shortcut, Command T, Control T for that transform tool. Here we can just make it a little bit narrower, or you can make it a little bit wider, entirely up to you. So I'm gonna take it just down very slightly, clicking in the framework, moving it over into this region. You can swivel it around, you can do all sorts of bits and pieces, but that will do nicely. Save it in layers, put it aside, leave it for a couple of days, then look at it with fresh eyes, make any adjustments, but looking around the picture, there's something else I'd just like to try with this. Also getting a bit nervous with the brush tool, so I'm gonna to press H on the keyboard to give me the hand tool. Right, I'm gonna click on the bottom layer. This is now highlighted, coming up to the top layer. I'm going to press Shift on the keyboard. Shift on the keyboard has highlighted all of the layers. Using Command T, Control T, one more time, there's our transform tool. Just gonna swivel it round a little bit into that area, just to give it a little bit of an angle. Lift it up, I want to make it look as if it's just been thrown down onto our tabletop. And there it is. There's our finished image. Go on, give it a try, see what you come up with. But I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it the thumbs up if you have, and don't forget to subscribe, as there's plenty more videos to come. But until the next time, it is happy imaging, and take care.